Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! The name's Jad Remington. The hometown is Dos Rios. And the occupation? Well, some folks call me a frontier town lawyer. But between us, even though I do have a law office, the very nature of the frontier and the people who populate it makes my occupation troubleshooter, with the accent on both words. Want me to prove it? Well, let's take the case of a gent known as Simran Whitey. Now, there was a time when the mere mention of the name Simran Whitey would have spread terror throughout the frontier, because Whitey was one of the most daring desperados of his time. But today, well, to be factual, let's say four weeks ago, Simran Whitey was a sick old man, slowly dying in a cell in the Archelata County Jail. In fact, Whitey's cellmate, Tex Cleaver, was sure the old man was dying as he watched him laboriously working over a crudely drawn map. Uh, what's that you got there, Whitey? You've been working on that thing most all day. Uh, prison sawbones tells me I'll be cashing in my chips any time now, Tex. That part don't worry me none. But I once done a person, a woman, a dreadful injustice. And I'm hoping before I kick off I'll be able to straighten things out for her. Uh -huh. Well, you still ain't told me what those hen tracks are that you've drawn there, Whitey. It's a map, Tex. A map that'll show where $80,000 is buried. 80000 Did you say 80000 Yeah. It's the money I stole from a gambling place in a bonanza town right close to Stampede years ago. And I'm sending this map to the woman who was cashier of the place. So she can return it to the folks it belongs to, if they're still alive. Uh, now, Whitey, you and me have shared this same cell for three years now, and I've done a lot of things for you. Now, instead of sending this map to some old woman who probably ain't even alive, why don't uh, you... Ah, there ain't no use wasting your breath on no song and dance ticks. No one's getting that map but Blanche McCarty. Why, you ungrateful old... <coughs> Now we'll see who gets that map. And if I can get past that stupid turnkey, that 80,000 is gonna be all mine. How did you get out, Tex? Last I heard of you, they give you 10 years. Well, I'll tell you, Pat. I didn't like their grub, so I had my butler pack my bags and I left their crummy old jail. Oh, so you're on the dodge, huh? Yeah. Well, if it's all the same to you, Cleveland, I don't want you or your kind hanging around my place. Now, wait a minute. Nesbitt's right, Tex. We don't want the law trailing you here. What you've done is your business, but we ain't gonna get mixed up in it. Now, will you, Jasper's wait? Now, if you two will hide me out... I'll cut you in on something that'll put you on easy street for the rest of your lives. I got an oil paint of you putting me on easy street. 
You ever hear of Cimarron Whitey? I ain't heard of him for years. Best I remember, he got sent away for sticking up a gambling joint and getting away with $80,000. Cimarron Whitey ain't got nothing to do with me. And I don't want you hanging around here. Well, that's all right with me, Nesbitt. But I got a map Whitey drew showing where that 80000 is cashed. I don't care if you... You what? Yeah, that's why I busted out. I got the map, and I'm on my way to get the money. Come on, Tex, let's go into my private office. There are too many people with long ears out here. And I want to hear your story about Simran Whitey. <laughs> It's about the whole story, Nesbitt. Whitey drew the map, and I got it. Yeah? Well, if you want Bat and me to hide you out, we want to see that map. Nothing doing. Don't be loco, Tex. We've got to be sure you got that map. Not on your tintype. You'll see that map after I see where you're going to hide me out. That's what I thought. You ain't got no map. Bat, your friend here is nothing but an out-and-out liar. <laughs> you can't make me sorry, Nesbitt. Not while I got this map. <laughs> You can call me anything you want. Why, you... Hold it, Pat. Maybe Tex is right. Huh? Why, you just... He talks confident enough to convince me. If he's running a bluff, we'll find out soon enough. I ain't bluffing. Look, Tex, I got a room upstairs where I got a bed I stretch out on when I get tired and can't go home. You go up and stay there until we're ready to leave tonight. Then Bat me will hide you out of my place. Good enough, Nesbitt. Go on outside... There's a little staircase running upstairs right behind the bar. That meal will be up later and wake you. Fine. And I'm giving it to you straight. We'll all have enough money to be on Easy Street before the week's over. <laughs> you think he's got that map, Nesbitt? I don't know, Bat. But you're going to find out. Huh? I'm going to find out. Cleaver's knocked out. Dead for sleep. Once he gets upstairs and falls on that bed, he'll be snoring inside of five minutes. Yeah, so... So? You go up after him in a little while and see if he's got that map on him or not. What if he wakes up, though? Well, what if he wakes up? You're wearing a gun, ain't you? I sure am wearing a gun, but I'm blamed if I'm using it on Tex Cleaver. Oh. Well, I say you are. And I say I'm not. Last you get upstairs and do as you're told. Well, who do you think you are giving me orders? I'll show you who I am mighty fast. Why, you four-flushing bag of wind. Go on, go for your gun. You couldn't hit the gun. <laughs> well, if there really is a map, Bat ain't gonna have no part of it. It's gonna be mine and no one else's. <laughs> That map spelled trouble, and the trouble led right to my doorstep. Once the prison warden found out what happened, and knowing that Simran Whitey had only days at most to live, he arranged his parole. And needing help, Whitey dragged himself cross-country and up to my office just in time to interrupt a game of euchre I was playing with the ex-medicine man, Cherokee O'Bannon, to keep his mind off what he calls drinking liquor. Worn and weary... The man who had plagued the whole Simran country was barely able to gasp out his story. You see, I was in love with Blanche McCarthy. When she turned me down, I got sore. So I held up the place where she worked as cashier. But if she didn't own the place, how could that hurt her? Everybody for miles around knew I was in love with her, Cherokee. So naturally, they thought she was in on the robbery with me. I figured it would ruin her life. And it did. In other words, now that you've ruined her life, you've relented and you want to see that she has the map so that you can get the money back and prove that she had nothing to do with it. That's about the size of a Remington. Yeah, but that was 20 years ago. Why do all this now? Because I didn't know until about a week ago that Blanche is still alive. Well, I knew in the old days. Roden told me she... <coughs> she's... She's living in an old nester's cabin up in the Rockies north of Stampede. Well, everything would have been all right if Tex Cleaver hadn't slugged you in the guard and broken jail with a map. That's the truth. I would have mailed the map to Blanche days ago. Whitey, as a lawyer, there isn't anything I can do for you. You mean that? But as a man, I'm telling you that Cherokee and I are going to find Tex Cleaver's trail. And with your help, run him to earth before he gets his murdering hands on that $80,000. It's 
It's all coming back to me, Chad. That stampede just over the rise of the next hill. It's too blasted bad Cleaver got as many days head start as he did. Well, knowing that every lawman in this part of the country will be looking for him, if he has the brains I give him credit for, he'll lay low for a spell. Chad, those shots came from dead ahead of us. Come on, Whitey, prod up that pony. Yeah. See, Chad? Two men. Yeah. One's been gunned down and the other's searching his clothes for something. Put that gun down, you bushwhacking... All right, if that's the way you want to play. He dropped him, Chad. Oh, look, he's getting up and hitting his horse. He's getting away. Let him go for now. With that tan and yellow calfskin vest and that white San Fran Stetson, if we ever see him again, we'll know him. Right now, we'd better get over there and see what we can do for the fellow who's been shot. Oh, boy. Chad, that's him, Tex Cleaver. He's as full of holes now as an accordion. Look, his jacket's almost ripped off, and so is his shirt. Somebody wanted that map and wanted it bad, and I guess he got it. He got it? Who's he, Chad? That fellow in the calfskin vest who just ran off. You see there, one of Cleaver's boots is off. I'll bet you that $80,000 and 10 cents more, that's where Cleaver hid the map he stole from you, Whitey, in his boot. Poor Jasper. But he's lucky at that. Breaking out, I'm surprised one of the prison guards didn't hit him. Well, we're not getting any place standing here. I guess the best thing to do is to pick him up and take him into town. No, not this time, Cherokee. We'll tell the sheriff about it. Right now, we've got a trail to follow and a murderer to trap. Uh, This is just a hunch, Chad. But uh, once we get to town, I want to go in and see a fellow called Nesbitt, if he's still around. If he hasn't changed any, he knows every owl hoot and gunslinger around here. Now, what is it you want me to do, Nisbet? Just help me dig this money out where it shows on the map. And believe me, I wouldn't be cutting you in if I didn't have this slug on my shoulder that I got this afternoon after I caught up with Cleaver. What's the deal? How do we split it up? Why... Why, 50-50, of course. You know something, Nesbitt? You better make sure it's 50-50. What are you talking about? I never was to nobody. Yeah, well, I haven't seen Bat around today. Bat? Why, uh, oh, Bat. Bat went up to Leadville. Yeah, I sent Bat up to Leadville on some business. <laughs> Leadville. <laughs> Maybe you are right, mister. Leadville may be a good name for where Bat went. Now, look. I don't know what happened to Bat, and I don't care much. But I do know that if I help you dig out this money and you try to cross me up, you'll be going to Leadville, too. (laughs) You'll be so full of lead, maybe they'll name you Leadville. Confound you, Chuck. You can't come in here threatening me. There's a duck. There's someone outside the window. (laughs) Who was it, Chuck? Who was at the window? I don't know, but I'm blame well going to find out. here now. Maybe. Maybe you were just seeing things, Chuck. I sure was seeing things. Since I generally hit what I see, whoever was outside that window is probably headed for the doctors right now. Or maybe even the undertakers. We'll return to the second act of The Chase, our exciting frontier town adventure in just a few moments. And now, Frontier Town. Of course, we were fools. We were the only people who didn't need the map to find the cache of hidden money. But as Chuck had told Nesbitt, whatever he saw, he hit. And poor old Whitey came back with one hole right through his thigh. Knowing that if we took him to a doctor's, all our plans might be ruined once the news got out, we hustled Whitey up country and made him comfortable on a bed of moss and boughs. 
He was weaker than ever. But with the heart of a mountain lion, Simran Whitey hung on. Nesbitt's got the map, all right, Chad. <laughs> and likely enough, him and that gunslinger are on their way up into the hills now. As long as Whitey seems to be holding his own, Chad, why don't we get the directions from him and see if we can't beat Nesbitt to the money? Can you tell us how to get to the place where you hid the money, Whitey? About five, six miles up that way. There's a little canyon full of cottonwoods and quakies. Turn left there. Uh Uh-huh. About a mile down the draw. There ought to be a cabin. (coughs) If it's not there no more, you'll have to see if you can find out where it used to be. Because exactly halfway between the house and the old corral is where I buried the strong box. We'll find it, Whitey. Come on, Chad. Just a minute, Cherokee. I want you to give Whitey your carbine, just in case. Uh, I don't reckon I'll be needing no rifle. I hope not, Whitey, because you're out on parole. And if you do manage to live and they find that you fired a gun, you'll be back in prison so fast it'll make your head swim. All right, Cherokee, let's go. Well, this is the cabin, Chuck. Whoa. Whoa. <coughs> Blast it. My shoulder's killing me. You get the pick and shovel off your horse while I try to locate the place on this map. You bet, Nes, but I'll get the tools. It's a good thing that cabin's still there and the corral. This must be just about the spot Whitey marked on the map. Here you are, Nesbitt. I'll start digging while you rest your shoulder. But you better keep your gun handy, just in case. If anyone even tries to follow us, they won't get very far. That's why I posted Lefty down at the mouth of the canyon. All right, Chuck, start digging. I can hardly wait to see the color of that $80,000. Look, Chad, there's a canyon full of cottonwoods and Quakey's right ahead of us. Too bad we couldn't have gotten up here in the daylight. With no moon, we're going to have a devil's own time trying to find that cabin and... (laughs) Cherokee, off your horse quick and play dead. Well, now, I don't see how one bullet could have gotten them both, but... And you're not going to see much of anything else after I get through with you. Why, you double dealing sneak... Chad, look out! You're right against the rim of the canyon! Chad! Stupid ape. He must have rolled right down to the bottom. Who do you think it was, Chad? Someone else who was after the money that Whitey buried? I'm sure I don't know. The only thing I know for sure is what we've got to do is get back to our horses and pray that we find that cabin before it's too late. Sure ain't struck nothing yet, Nesbitt. It's got to be there somewhere, Chuck. Yeah. It's the exact spot that shows on the map old Simmer and Whitey drew. Swinging this pickaxe is no cinch. And I'm getting Just tired what of... what are you men doing what? here on what my you... property? Who are you? I thought I recognized that voice. Ain't you Nesbitt from down in Stampede? Yeah, I'm Nesbitt, but I don't know who... Well, I'll be jiggered. Blanche McCarty. Who's Blanche McCarty? The dame. The cashier who was in on the robbery with Whitey. So you're looking for it too, huh, Blanche? Well, you ain't gonna get it. What are you talking about? Looking for what? Look, you old bag of bones. It ain't gonna do you any good to play dumb. I'm telling you I don't know what you're talking about. And what's more, this is my place, and I'm telling you to get off it. Chuck, get behind her and let her have it with a shovel. What's that? What'd you say? Why, why, just telling my friend here... That being in with Simmer and Whitey, you probably got the dinero already. I wasn't in with him. I had nothing to do with that robbery, and I... Nice going, Chuck. What do you want to do? Finish her off? You loco or something. Pull trigger up here, and if anybody hears it, we'll never get that money. No. We'll tie her up and drag her up to her cabin. There's probably a closet there where we can hide her till we're through up here. And then we'll be in the clear. Come on. Well, 
Holy blue blazes, Chad, how much further can this cabin be? I wish I knew, Cherokee. After 20 years, Whitey's memory of what a mile might be certainly isn't too trustworthy. Only one thing to do, just keep knocking on these horses and hope we get there in time. I don't believe he buried no dough here. I think it's... What's that? Your shovel just hit something. It, it did, Nisbet. It's a metal strong box as sure as your foot high. Well, get it out, Chuck. Hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Chuck. Don't be so doghorn slow. There. I reckon I can lift it out now. Come on. Out you come. Wait. That thing is heavy. Let's take it into Blanche's house where we can see. A good idea. And don't forget, Nisbet. We're splitting this 50-50. Sure, sure we are. Put the box on that table, yeah. Chuck. Yeah. Now for a look inside the box. I think that's got it. Oh, look at them greenbacks. That must be all I need here for the rest of my life. But a dead man won't have no use for money, Chuck. Hey, what? And in a couple of seconds, that's what you're going to be. Why, you double cross Hold it. Uh, Don't move, either one of you. All right, come on, Cherokee. Get in through the window while I cover you. Right, Dad. Nesbitt. Nesbitt, the one with the gun's a lawyer. Come on, shoot out the lamp. Chuck, let's get out of here. Throw some lead, Nesbitt. They're coming after us. Chad, when that lamp broke, it set fire to this place. Grab that strong box and get it outside quick. Someone's banging on that closet door, Chad. Must have locked somebody in this closet. Here, give me a hand. But the money! Good Lord, let that go for now. Come on, lay under this door. Uh, 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 Merciful Providence, Chad, look. It's an old woman. All right, help me get her out of here. Then we'll come back for the money if it isn't burned up. <laughs> All right, Chuck, this is far enough. You double-cross it, weasel. I got a good mind to bash your brains in. You nitwit. Didn't you know I was just playing a joke on you inside? I wouldn't have shot you no more than I would have shot the old lady. Would have brought too many people around. A lot of good that'll do us now. With them two in there. We're taking care of them two. With that cabin burning all around them, they can't stay in there much longer. And when they come out, with the flames behind them, they'll look like clay pipes in a shooting gallery. Yeah, they sure will. And Mr. Nesbitt, you better not miss. Yes, sir. Here they come now. Over this way, Cherokee. Away from the sparks. You ready, Nesbitt? I sure am. And this is the end of the... <laughs> Nesbitt, what happened? Where the devil did you... <laughs> Cherokee, there's someone out here. I wonder who threw those two shots. Well, I'll be blamed. Here are the two polecats who set fire to the cabin, and they're as dead as doornails. From the looks of them with their guns out and cocked, I'd say they were about to get us. I'd sure like to know who shot them. Wait a minute. Here comes someone now. Chad! By the whiskers of the prophets, do you see who it is? Simmer and Whitey. Chad, here's the, the carbine, you lone man. I broke my... Parole. I, I, don't tell uh, Warden that I. Chad, is he? Is he? He's gone, Cherokee. But he saved our bacon. Poor old Whitey. He was tough and bad, but he was one of the best of them. He died with his boots on. <laughs> I know that riding double is no particular pleasure, but are you comfortable, Mrs. McCarty? It's Miss McCarty, if you please. <laughs> hey, when I see her eyes flash like that, Chad, I can see why Whitey fell in love with her 20 years ago. And I can see why Whitey was still in love with her. Too bad that he ended the way he did. Oh, it isn't really. 
No, I don't mean that Whitey wasn't a wild one and deserved to die that way. I just mean that, well, if he came back to get me, there wouldn't have been much happiness for either one of us. I guess you're right, Blanche. His number was up weeks ago. Uh, uh, you part my curiosity. Uh, just what were you planning to do with that 80,000, ma'am? Or miss, as the case may be. Uh, I don't know. Billy Fellers owned the place Whitey stuck up. has been dead for years now. Can't give it back to him. Well, then, why don't you take it and buy yourself some Ferris clothes, get all fixed up, and enjoy life for a change? Dad, do you realize what you're saying? Now, if Miss McCarthy would care to invest a few thousand dollars in my genuine Indian rattlesnake oil, I can promise her Oh, that... no, I won't. I've run up against you medicine men before. No, I've lived my life. Can't change it now, but... There's a lot of folks around Stampede who could use that money. Maybe I'll see that they get it. Yeah, maybe I will. Well, Cherokee, are you going to let that money go just as easy as all that? <laughs> <laughs> My boy, when I come face to face with someone like Blanche here, someone who's real folks... All the chicanery and that sharp little brain of mine seems to melt away and form a big lump in my throat. <laughs> hey, I must be getting old. Better get back to town before I get any older. Get up there! Get up! Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmar. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood.